Hey there everyone, meteorologist Ryan Weekman here. It's just like riding a bike, doing a weather hangout here. It's not our Sunday night weather hangout that we used to do. Uh, we'll call this one our Friday night weather hangout. I am so happy to be back here geeking out with you and I'm glad that you're along with me. Let's start this one off and we'll call it an oldie but a goodie. If you remember the good old days, how we started these off and that's of course comment with where you're watching from and I'm gonna give some shout outs to the different cities Yes, I'm going to get to the snow. I'm going to get to the rest of it. Make sure you hit the share button down below. Send this out to family and friends. We'll get more people in here uh, all geeking out together. Uh, we've got people already joining in. Uh, Kathy is the big winner. Tiffin, good to see you. <laughs> Let's get some more comments in here so we can uh, get some more uh, shout outs here. Let's see. We've got uh, North Baltimore. We've got Finley. Good to see you guys. Ben, good to see you. Uh, Karen, hello. Thanks for joining me. Robert's out in Toledo. Good to have you along, Robert. And I'm so geeked out about having another one of these weather hangouts. Uh, working here on a big board Friday basketball night. And so we thought, hey, let's let's have a little bit of fun here. Let's, let's geek out. And I'm glad that you're along with me. Um, again, right where you're from or where you're watching right now, and we'll give some shout outs to this one here. Uh, we've got Vickery, Perrysburg Township. We've got Bryan, Ohio. Uh, Lisa in Delta. Hello. Good to see you. And just looking at the weather pattern, you've probably seen, obviously, the page of the posts that I've made the last few days. Things are looking a little bit interesting for the next week. That's not to say that this is going to be the end all be all biggest winter storm you've ever seen, but. The weather pattern is looking active and we're going to get more into this coming up here. I'm going to give a few moments, let some more people hop in here. We said we'd start it at 8 p.m. and we'll just hope that everything's doing all right for you. Let's see some more shout outs that we have here. We've got Napoleon. We've got some people out in Wauseon. Good to have you along for us on a Friday night weather hangout. Didn't know how many people would show up on a Friday night. I figured you guys had plans or something or I don't know, but I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're geeking out alongside on a, a really good looking evening tonight. Of course, things a little bit chilly. We've got Natasha down in Fremont saying hello. Good to have you along. This is gonna be one of those weeks here that by the end of it, even snow lovers, looking at me here, uh, snow lovers are gonna be saying, yeah, it's, it's time for spring. We're ready for spring weather. Um, I like doing these hangouts because of course we can, we can do Facebook Lives from our, our phone, but it's, it's not the same, is it? Uh, on here, you're going to see, I'm going to be able to put up our weather graphics um, and we're going to be able to do things, geek out a little bit more. And I'll give you a prime example of that. Boom. See, look at that. The stuff you see on air, we can show here in our Sunday night weather hangout. Ah, Friday night weather hangout. It's like old habit. I just go back to it and say Sunday night weather hangout. Um, Becky says models sure are not a green. No, they rarely do, Becky. Um, that's what makes our job more fun, right? Models are good guidance. We've got to try to apply our smarts to it to uh, decipher exactly what's going on. Uh, we've got Jennifer and Mommy. Good to see you. Uh, Bonita down in Perrysburg. Nice to have you along. Uh, Heather up in Grand Haven, Michigan. We got about two feet of snow up here. That's it? You can do better than that. <laughs> you will do better than that probably the next couple days get some more snow uh andrea good to see you down in my old neighborhood there in south toledo glad to have you along oh you're down in sylvania all right so we'll give a sylvania shout out all right but i will say uh, i do miss living uh within walking distance of wixie bakery um although i've lost a few pounds since i moved further away from there but i really miss it uh, Angie, hello, good to have you along down in Weston. Uh, Karen saying we're already ready with spring, ready for spring. I understand. Next week though is not going to look anything like spring in Northwest Ohio. Uh, Becky down in Tiffin, glad to have you along. Uh, Teresa's asking question: What is the definition of a weather event? Good question, Teresa. It's very subjective. There's no definition really. Uh, we just say a weather event is when um, significant weather happens and your definition of significant may be very different from somebody else's. And so uh, we just use terms like storms or weather events, uh, significant uh, situations. There's all sorts of different terminology you can use. But there's really no terminology that um, defines a winter storm versus a non-winter storm different places, different different uh, definitions of, you know, four inches of snow in Northwest Ohio, that's a pretty good snow. Four inches of snow in Alabama, that's a really big snow. So you see, 
there's just no real definition. It's a great question, uh, but it is very subjective. Uh, Laurel down in Castalia, glad to have you along. We've got Pam in Arcadia, and we've got Heather waving hi in Finley. What do you say? It's been five minutes. Should we get going here? Should we geek out a little bit? What do you got? What you tell me? This is how we do these weather hangouts. You direct which way we're going to go with it here. What do you want to talk about first? What questions do you have? Um, I'll maybe go through a little bit of a spiel. If you watch my 5 and 6 p.m. newscasts, you're going to see a few graphics that you recognize, some that I didn't put on there as well, and uh, uh, I'll get kind of behind the scenes on this with our weather forecast. Uh, what do you want to know most about? And uh, I'm going to let you decide. I will zoom out a little bit real quick uh, just to show you Boy, we've been really lucky to have Lake Michigan off to our west. It's really saved us this week from the harshest and the absolute worst of the, the cold. Um, earlier, it was looking like uh, when we were predicting even colder temperatures that this cold air was going to sneak around the southern side of Lake Michigan. Uh, thankfully, that hasn't been the case. A lot of it has actually come, tried to come straight across Lake Michigan. And uh, the, even though they're, they're not warm, the lake waters are warmer than what you see in the central plains. And so uh, it really softens the blow of the extremely cold air. And Lake Michigan is a very deep lake. It almost never freezes over 50%. And so uh, that really takes a lot of the sting out of the Arctic air, or at least it has uh, this week, uh, from what it really could have been. Uh, Cindy says, bring on the snow. Uh, Sean says, hello from West Toledo. Good to see you. Uh, Jennifer, hi. Um, let's see. Uh, Sean says, why does the Doppler up near Monroe sometimes reverse direction? Um, there's a number of reasons. Uh, the little spinny wheel thing or the, the lines that you see, here's an here's a insider secret. Are you guys ready? That little line isn't actually how the radar is like really sweeping. The, the data is getting ingested and they have that line go around. Uh, sometimes the meteorologist at the National Weather Service or the radar site can do what's called a sector scan. So if there's something very interesting on radar, they can pick out just one slice of the whole pie to kind of look at. Um, there's a whole bunch of different reasons why that radar uh, guy will reverse, but uh, there's nothing wrong with the radar or anything. It's uh, just kind of the radar recalibrating and doing its thing. So uh, good question. Okay, let's keep on here. Uh, so we've got the heart of the cold air back off to our west, right? Um, that's going to be a high pressure system, and this is pretty important for us when we think about the overall scale of what's going on. And here's the reason why. I'm actually going to show you a different graphic first. Um, let's go to this guy. And again, some of you have already seen this because I did this a couple nights ago, but this is a really important graphic. So look at where that high pressure system is across the north central plains. That's where the heart of the Arctic air is, right? Well, high pressure systems um, are basically mountains of air. Think of them that way, mountains of air. And if you were going for a hike, what would be the easiest way to get from point A to point B? Would it be to climb over a mountain or just to simply go around the mountain? The answer is to kind of go skirt around the mountain, right? Well, storm systems do the same thing. They don't like to climb up the mountain. They like to go around the mountain. And so uh, we've got a lot of energy, as you're going to see here in a minute, coming onto the west coast and in the Four Corners region. Uh, so those lows are going to take a detour all the way down into Texas. And that's why you're also going to hear a lot about uh, big winter storms down in Texas and Oklahoma and Louisiana, places that don't normally see big time cold they're going to experience their turn for some winter weather. Well, if you looked at this scenario and you're thinking, um, okay, Ryan, if we had West Coast storms coming on here, it's all the high pressure, it goes to the south, that's cool, but why don't these lows just kind of keep going this way, right? That would be a very intelligent question if you asked that one. Here's the reason why. Look off to the east. There's another high pressure system. This, again, is a mountain of air. So now you've got a low pressure system. You've got several of them backed up here. and Essentially, they force the other one to, to keep going off to the, the east. All right, well, where's this thing? Where's this thing? Whoa, don't do that. Where's this thing going to go? Can't go this way. Can't go this way. Where's it going to go? Well, because the Coriolis force takes a turn, and it wants to go up this way. All right? Let's draw it on the map. Hey, look at that. I already had it ready for you. So it takes a swing off to the north and east, funneling right in between these two areas of high pressure. That puts the Great Lakes and the Ohio River Valley and northwest Ohio, southeastern Michigan, square in the potential zone 
for some pretty healthy snow. But when you're taking a path, sometimes it diverges, right? You could think like a Robert Frost quote here if you wanted to. All right, this is one way that it could go, but, whoa, this thing's doing something really funky now. But let's say it goes just a little bit further to the east. Well, now it's on the other side of the mountains. And that area of the worst precipitation for winter weather shifts just to the east. Now, we'll still get something, but the worst of it would go off to the east. And this is why I want to caution a lot of people. If you uh, even casually look at weather models or you follow different uh, Facebook pages, you could see some outrageous weather posts potentially about this series of storms that we're going to be tracking simply because when you add one after another after another, if we were to get into the sweet spot of each one of them, highly unlikely, you would get some big, big, big time snow totals. Ask yourself a question. If you see a forecast model or you see somebody post something on Facebook that says, we're going to get 24 inches of snow. If you've lived in Northwest Ohio for the majority of your life or even just a few years, ask yourself, how many times have we ever gotten 24 inches of snow in a week? didn't happen during the blizzard of 78 so that's not your answer that was only an 8 to 12 inch snow it was the extreme winds that caused problems with that the answer is essentially never so that's just my word of caution be careful when you see extreme things posted they're oftentimes posted there to get an extreme reaction all right there you go. That's all I got for you. Uh, what other questions, comments you guys have? Uh, Jennifer's asking snow totals. When and where? That would be uh, very convenient if I knew the answer to all that. I'm going to explain to you what we know, and I'll also level with you and tell you what we don't know at this point, okay? So here's first alert Doppler, northwest Ohio, southeastern Michigan. Now let's go back to that cold. There's that area of high pressure and the cold with it, all right? Now, let's get to our different snow potential systems. Switch it back to radar. This is what we're going to be watching for Saturday. Notice it's mainly light snowfall. It's got a little bit of a bigger kicker out here across Nebraska. This will eventually slide our way, and it's our chance for snow tomorrow. I think most spots are looking at an inch or less. There's going to be a narrow band that could get up to two inches of snow tomorrow. Just be aware of it, okay? But that's probably about the high end of what we're looking at. So that's Saturday's system. The energy for our next system after tomorrow, this one comes in right at daybreak or just before Monday morning. It's right down at the four corners. So there's two pieces of energy and two separate systems that we're watching. Well, you don't have to go far or look very far behind to find our next system. And this one's right on the heels of the one in the four corners. This arrives Monday night into Tuesday morning. This one has a little bit more of a kicker potential here, uh, maybe a little higher end potential, depending exactly on that track. And that's something that we'll be watching very closely. Here comes the fourth one. And this is why you can see that's Thursday there why we are saying this is an incredibly active weather pattern with high pressure anchored where we expect it right here in the northern part of the central plains each one of these systems is going to take a shape like this that gives it an opportunity to grab gulf of mexico moisture as it comes by but we still have a lot of cold air in place so that warm moist air comes over top of the cold air turns into snow most likely. It's the perfect recipe for a very active winter weather pattern. Make sense? Thanks for geeking out with me. This is fun. I got more to talk about, I promise. But keep your questions coming. I want to see them down below here. Um, and I'm also going to look at something else here real quick. While you guys type some comments, whatever questions that you might have, I also want to monitor another post that we have on here as we kind of geek out um, okay so I saw that
And just to kind of put this in a little more context for our next best chance for snow, uh, yes, we're going to have some snow tomorrow. There's going to be some spots that get enough you'll have to shovel. But I think Monday morning will be our next widespread snow chance. It's going to be cold, so roads are going to immediately accept the snow as it starts to fall. So Monday morning will be tricky, and then Monday night a heavier snow will be possible. Three inches or greater out of that one. Uh, just to show you a track on it, here you can see Saturday's snow. Off to the da. Oh, I didn't make this go out far enough. Hold on a second. Let me change some timing on here for you real quick. Hold on, hold on. I know you're holding on. Don't worry. Let's turn off that low because it's not going to be accurate anymore. Okay, so here comes the system, and there you can see it. So just a little bit of a shift, even just a few miles to the east or west with a system like this, will cause differences in exactly who sees the heaviest snow. And so when you look at this, I know the reaction is going to be, oh no, the heaviest snow, or oh yay, the heaviest snow is gonna go off to the east. All I'm showing you here is a computer model simulation. Do not take it for gospel. This is just a good simulation of what potentially could happen. And yes, this one shows the heaviest snow sliding off to the east, but even here, that snow would definitely accumulate and it'd be something that we would want. Uh, Kendall's asking, good snowman snow? Uh, actually, I think it's gonna be very bad snowman snow. The reason why is temperatures are gonna be very cold, especially with this one, Monday night into Tuesday. Um, we could be as cold as the upper single digits when it's snowing here. And that is gonna be a very fine powdery type of snow. It's not gonna be uh, like what we had a couple of days or a couple of weeks ago when that snow was much more slushy. Uh, I had a great question here from Laurel asking, what time will the snow start on Monday? The first round will start before daybreak. That one is getting out of here by around lunchtime. We get an afternoon break and then the evening hours overnight, this is like midnight to daybreak Tuesday, uh, that's where the second and probably heavier potential round of snowfall will come in. So this is just getting us through Thursday. Uh, Mary, will these fronts be fluffy light snow or heavy wet snow? Well, I hope I answered that question for you already. Uh, this will definitely be the light fluffy type of snow. I know many of you are sitting here waiting for me to pull out a snowfall map. Uh, just not gonna happen with this one. Again, one to two inches of snow at the most for tomorrow. Uh, keep an eye out for Monday morning. That one could easily be another one to three inch type of snow. And then you see this one here Tuesday night. And then look out for Thursday as well, another system uh, that we're gonna be watching. Uh, Quentin saying, so good for snowmobiling? Well, there's gonna be snow on the ground, so I would imagine it'd be good for snowmobiling. Uh, but yeah, it should be pretty light stuff. Just be careful out there as you guys uh, have some fun uh, snowmobiling. Either way, if you love winter, if you love snow, this certainly looks like a great week for you. All right, we've got new data coming in. I'm gonna check it out. I'm going to give you the latest. I'm going to send an update to the First Alert Weather app when it fully comes in here in a little bit. I'm going to be on the air tonight at 10 over on Fox 36 over at WTOL at 11 o'clock as well. Don't forget it's Big Board Friday night as well. So happy we could do another one of these, uh, I'll call them Sunday night weather hangouts, but this is a Friday night weather hangout. Uh, real quick, Kathy's asking, what about winds and drifting? Winds will be a problem with this light snow out of the northeast as the wind direction could be 15 to 25 miles per hour. And with this light snow, drifting will be a problem, especially on rural roads, as we all know. Really fun doing this, though. Can't wait. We'll see you guys uh, coming up here later on tonight on the app and on air. Take care.